Hey everyone, welcome back to Fuzzy Logic Lectures. This lecture is about value assignments. Mainly, we explore how our fuzzy membership values assign to a variable, or in other words, we will learn about fuzzification of real world scenarios. Also, we will learn about where do membership values that are contained in a relation come from. We will learn about this second topic in this lecture as we were discussing about relations for the past few lectures and I thought we will close off that topic with this video. We will learn about the first topic that is falsification in the coming videos. So let's start our lecture. We learned that relations define the connection between two or more fuzzy sets and the strength of these connections are expressed by membership values mu r i j whose value constitutes the strength of connection between ith element of first set and jth element of another set in relation r. For simplicity, let us use r i j to represent the membership value mu r. Now the question is, how do we obtain the value of this alpha? There are seven different ways to develop the value of alpha that characterizes the relation R. They are Cartesian product, closed form expression, lookup table, linguistic rules of language, classification, automated methods from input output data and finally similarity method in data manipulation. The first method here, the Cartesian product, is to calculate the relations from the Cartesian product of two or more fuzzy sets. This is already discussed in detail in the past few lectures and therefore we are not discussing again. Please visit lectures 6 and 7 in our fuzzy logic playlist if you are not familiar with this method. Now in the second method, closed form expression, membership value Rij can be found through simple observation of a physical process. For example, consider two sets of numbers x and y. Suppose we define a relation R from set x to set y such that yj is the square of xi where yj and xi are members of the set x and y respectively. Then we can create a membership function for this relation as R i j is equal to 1 minus absolute value of x i square minus y j by x i square. As an example, consider the relation between number 3 in set x and number 7 in set y. Here R i j of 3 7 is equal to 1 minus absolute value of 3 square minus 7 the whole by 3 square which is equal to 1 minus 2 by 9 or 0.777. So the membership value for the relation between number 3 and 7 is 0.777. This means that number 7 is not the square of number 3 but is a close value to the actual square of 3. If we take 3 in set x and 9 in set y, then Rij of 3 comma 9 is equal to 1 minus 3 square minus 9 the whole by 3 square which is equal to 1. This means that number 9 is the square of number 3 and hence we obtain the highest membership value for the relation between them. So I hope everyone understood the method of closed form expression. Next is lookup table. In this method, the strength of relation between the elements of sets is already written down in a table and we just need to take the value from that. As an example, Consider this lookup table showing the relation between strength and weight of steel. Here the relation matrix is already created based on knowledge and expertise. All we have to do is simply look at the table and get the membership value. Ok. Next is linguistic rules of knowledge. In this case 
fuzzy relations are expressed as if then rules these rules are created based on experience and opinions from experts we will learn this method in detail in a later video similarly we will learn about classification and automated methods later through this lecture series lastly we have the similarity method The concept of similarity relation was introduced by Lotfi Sade in his 1971 paper Similarity Relations and Fuzzy Ordering. This method aims to represent the similarity between two data which can be linguistically expressed as data x1 is rather similar to data x2 or data x1 is very similar to data x2. Now there are many methods under the umbrella of similarity methods but we will study the two most prevalent methods which are cosine amplitude and max min method let us learn about cosine amplitude method first consider a data array x which consists of data samples x1 x2 x3 etc to xn now each of these data samples xi in x is itself a vector of length m that is xi is equal to xi1 xi2 etc to xim to understand this better consider a data array x which is a collection of cities so here x1 is kochi x2 is bangalore x3 is chennai and x4 is delhi since here are only four cities in data set x the value of n here is 4 now each city can be described by a set of properties like longitude latitude average temperature area and elevation for instance kochi is at a longitude of 76 degree east latitude of 9 degree north with an average temperature 25 degree celsius and area 94.88 km square and elevation 0 m since here each city is described by a set of five properties the value of m here is 5 so x11 is 76 degree x12 is 9 degree north x13 is 25 degree celsius x14 is 94.88 km square and x15 is 0 m Similarly we have x21 x22 x23 and so on with this example i hope you understood the concept of data array x with n data samples and each data sample is described by a m dimensional vector now cosine amplitude method gives a similarity or relation matrix where the relation between two data samples xi and xj is given by the membership value r i j is equal to absolute value of sigma k equal to 1 to m x i k multiplied by x j k the whole divided by square root of sigma k equal to 1 to m x i k square into sigma k equal to 1 to m x j k square where i comma j is equal to 1 2 3 etc to n to understand this better let us take an example a group of scientists are trying to find the relation of weather pattern between five cities based on the rainfall data it received in the months of january to april may to august and september to december rainfall in each duration of year is expressed as a percentage or ratio of the total rains received in the year and this table summarizes the findings of the scientist team we are asked to determine the similarity between weather patterns of five cities using cosine amplitude method okay so here you can find that we are trying to find similarity between five cities hence n is equal to 5 now each of the city city a city b city c city d and city e are described by three properties rainfall in january to april rainfall in may to august and rainfall in september to december since each city is described by three properties we have m here equal to 
now using cosine amplitude method we have r i j equal to sigma k equal to 1 to 3 x i k x j k the whole by square root of sigma k equal to 1 to 3 x i k square into sigma k equal to 1 to 3 x j k square here you should note that the values of i and j vary from 1 to n okay now as an example for i equal to 1 and j equal to 2 we have r12 equal to x11 into x21 plus x12 into x22 plus x13 into x23 the whole divided by square root of x11 square plus x12 square plus x13 square into x21 square plus x22 square plus x23 square here x11 is 0.3 that is the first property in the first city similarly x21 is the first property in the second city that is 0.2 this may seem a little confusing because here the data is presented in the m is to n format to clarify the data better let us present it in n into m format okay now we can easily calculate rij r12 is equal to x11 which is 0.3 into x21 which is 0.2 plus x12 which is 0.6 into x22 which is 0.4 plus x13 which is 0.1 into x23 which is 0.4 the whole by square root of x11 square which is 0.3 square plus x12 square plus x13 square into x21 square plus x22 square plus x23 square and the final value after computation is 0.836 similarly if you calculate all other values of r i j you will get a n into n matrix r like this now using this relation or similarity matrix you can see that city c is more similar to city b than city a as 0.934 is a greater value than 0.914. Similarly, city E is more similar to city C than city D in weather patterns. Okay. There are some other interesting factors too. If you see, all the diagonal elements here are 1. This is because every city is completely similar to itself. Also, you will see that diagonally opposite elements are the same. This is because the relation between city A and city C is the same as the relation between city C and city A, right? Hence, you only need to calculate the values for one side of the diagonal. You can get the other values using these properties, okay? Also, as you can see, R has all the diagonal elements as 1 and is a symmetric matrix. Hence, as we learned in the last video, R is a tolerance relation. Right? Next, let us learn about the maximum similarity method. Now, please don't confuse this with the maximum method we learned in composition. That is a totally different concept. Okay, so in the maximum similarity method, Rij is given by sigma k equal to 1 to m 
minimum of x i k x j k divided by sigma k equal to 1 to m maximum of x i k x j k where i and j varies from 1 to n if we consider the same example as before n is equal to 5 and m is equal to 3 so r i j is equal to sigma k equal to 1 to 3 minimum of x i k x j k divided by sigma k equal to 1 to 3 maximum of x i k x j k where i and j varies from 1 to 5 so for i equal to 1 and j equal to 2 we have r 1 2 equal to minimum of x 1 1 comma x 2 1 plus minimum of x 1 2 comma x 2 2 plus minimum of x 1 3 comma x 2 3 the whole divided by maximum of x 1 1 comma x 2 1 plus maximum of x 1 2 comma x 2 2 plus maximum of x 1 3 comma x 2 3 so on computation we have point 2 plus point 4 plus point 1 divided by point 3 plus point 6 plus point 4 which is equal to point 538 similarly if you calculate other values of r i j you will get a tolerance relation r here the values may be different from cosine amplitude method but the essence remains the same that is city e is more similar to city c than city d okay that's all for this lecture to summarize we learned about seven different ways of value assignments in relations we also learned about two specific forms of similarity methods which are cosine amplitude method and maximin method in the next video, we will learn about the concept of falsification. I hope that all the concepts taught in this lecture are clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either me or some other viewer will surely help you out. Also, if you found the lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching Topperly and have a great day.